Let's be consistent. Welcome to The Key to Consistency. I am your host, Rakia Collins. And on today's episode, we are going to be addressing the big question of what does consistency have to do with love? Do these two things have a relationship? Um, And if so, what does that relationship look like? And how can we be more consistent when we think about love? We're going to look at this from a couple of different ways. Of course, we're going to look at it from that romantic lens, but we're also going to look at it from the lens of family relationships and just people that you may love. They may not be family. They may be super close friends, right? We're going to look at it from both platonic and not platonic lens. And hopefully you come away from today's episode with some action items that you can take away to begin to better implement consistency in your love life, both romantic and non-romantic. So the first topic we're going to dive deeper into is emotional consistency, right? We find studies have shown from my research that, of course, where partners are consistently expressing affection, um, support, and understanding of one another, that really contributes to a higher level of relationship satisfaction and feelings of love, right? When you are with someone and they are consistently demonstrating care for you, they're being empathetic towards you. It really helps you foster a level of emotional intimacy with that person and really helps you strengthen the bond between you and your partner, which that is a lot easier said than done because we know that day to day you have your own life to manage. If you, you know, work a nine to five, if you are a caretaker, if you are a homemaker, you have other things going on in your life outside of being someone's partner. And so we find that it may be difficult to consistently pour from a cup when you may feel empty yourself. And so when we think about ways to layer on emotional consistency in your life, to me, this starts with you being emotionally consistent with yourself. If you were to sit back and really take a look at your day, when are you emotionally at your lowest, right? Does it happen when you are transitioning from work to home life? Um, You find that after work, you just need to kind of decompress. You're feeling drained. You had a lot of demands, a lot of meetings on your calendar. Really looking at your day and figuring out Where am I at my weakest or lowest from an emotional perspective? Because when you begin to kind of figure out where those weak spots are, those points are, if you will, at that point, then you'll be able to say to yourself, okay, now that I know and I fully understand this is where a gap could possibly be, this is what I'm going to do to fix this gap, right? So to give a realistic example I know for me, it is after work. It's the moment that I log off of my computer for that day, whether I've had a ton of customer meetings or whether I've just been, you know, knee deep in work that I had to get out the door. That I know the moment I log off, I am not myself, right? I'm still frazzled from the day. Um, I still have work immediately top of mind for at least the next 30 minutes or so, just trying to make sure I didn't forget anything or, you know, forget not to do something at work. And so with that, right, for a long time, I used to take that to my partner. And what that would result in is a lot of like angry text messages or phone calls, because of course, when you get off work, you want to, you know, talk to your partner, see how their day went. Right. And so I would just still be in this very tense mode of like working and thinking about work to where when we're having conversations, I'm not really fully engaged. I'm not fully present because I care about what you're saying, but my mind is just someplace else, right? So what does that look like for me from a fixed perspective? Well, first and foremost, I wind my day down at 4 p.m., right? What does that look like, right? Although I may still be working until like 5.30 or 6 o'clock, at 4 o'clock, I'm looking at, okay, what do you have left to do? What meetings do you have? If I know I have some late evening meetings, a meeting at five, a meeting at 5.30, 
I will begin to make a to-do list for the next day. As much as I can, I will try to finish up what is on that to-do list, but I will begin to make to-do lists for the next day. And then if with those late meetings, if I have to do items that come out of those later meetings, I will put those on the to-do list immediately because I've already checked off of work. And I know to some people that's like, well, why would you do that? You can take it on that same day. No. On a future episode, we will talk more about boundaries and building consistent boundaries. But for me, putting that boundary in place at work was to say, after a certain time, you're not going to work on anything new. You are going to build a to-do list and start having that to-do list. And every single day, you're going to prioritize that to-do list based on those high ticket items that have to be done. And you may be like, well, Rakia, what does this have to do with love? Well, by doing this to-do list, I've started the decompression process while I am at work. If I've already shifted some items from today to tomorrow, ordered them based on how I'm going to tackle them, when I log off of work, I'm now less concerned about what needs to be done the next day. Of course, there are always going to be pop-up meetings and pop-up tasks from other people, but I've already ordered my day to say, these are the items I have to get done because they were rollover from the other day or because something else might have happened and I have to prioritize these items. Like I go into my day with a to-do list and these are the things that must get done. Even if that means that I have to say no to an income coming tasks from someone else. So when I log off of work, already having that to-do list for the next day allows my mind to say work is in good shape, right? You don't have to worry about work at this particular point. When you close your laptop, you already know what you need to do for tomorrow. You've done what you've done today. Nothing else about work needs to happen, right? But just because I've handled that piece of it, that doesn't necessarily mean emotionally I'm still in the right state. I'm just not as as stressed, right, as I normally would be had I not done that process. So what do I do to actually fill myself up with, with the love and the support that I would need in order to be a good partner? For me, that truly looks like spending time in the word and really basking myself in the word and the love and the knowledge of God and that God is love and really spending time reading the word, even if it's just five or 10 minutes, right? I generally try to read the Bible a few times a day where I can, whether it's in the morning or during lunch or in the evenings. And so That's one of the spaces in my life where I found that reading the Bible, what I get from work allows me just, especially if I'm reading like in the book of Psalms, where there's all these love poems written by David, talking to God, praising God. It just really helps lift my spirit. I've also implemented being able to like deep breathe a little bit after work. Sometimes for some people, it's going, especially if you work from home, it's hopping directly in the shower and just basically washing the day off yourself, but like literally washing the day off yourself, right? Even if you find that you can't necessarily do something like that because you have children or you have a spouse or you have whatever you have to do that requires your immediate attention the moment you hop off of work, I would encourage you while you're, let's say, cooking dinner to begin to deep breathe, right? And I know to some people when you deep breathe, depending on the context in which you normally deep breathe, people and be like, well, I mean, are you upset about something? Is something wrong? Because why are you deep breathing, right? Like that could also be a sign of tension, but truthfully deep breathing and grounding yourself and putting yourself in the moment, even if you just wiggle your toes for a little bit, right? And you just like kind of flex your shoulders and do some light stretching as you're picking out your seasoning so you can season the chicken for your kids so they can have something to eat, right? Like making sure that you find time for yourself while still partaking in those activities that help your family run smoothly. But again, that for me, the time of day where I have that emotional gap would be after work. And those are some of the things that I've personally done to make sure that I'm able to be fully present for my partner, that I can listen to anything that's being stated, that I'm not kind of halfway here, halfway somewhere else, but that I am like fully present. I am fully engaged in the conversation that's being had. So I would encourage you Outside of like thinking about your day and figuring out where can I possibly bridge an emotional gap to 
fully show up and fully be present and express that full love for my partner, I would also encourage you to make a conscious effort to express affection, support towards your partner. Even if it's like a text in the middle of the day to say, hey, I'm thinking about you. Hey, how's work? Whether it's a handwritten sticky note on the mirror in the morning to say, hey, love you. Things that you may not normally do, but things that help keep the relationship strong because you're consistently showing that affection and showing that support and really just being there for your partner. It is important that when your partner is expressing something to you, even if it's how their day went, that you're validating their emotions regularly, right? And sometimes a validation is not always agreeance. Sometimes validation is just active listening. I'm not on my phone. I am making eye contact. If you are trying to demonstrate something to me about what happened in your day, I'm watching the entire skit, right? I am looking, I'm there, I'm present, right? Making sure that we're being thoughtful and that we're being kind to our partners as well. It'll just really help reinforce that you love and care for them. And in the world that we live in today, we trust me, we could use all of the love that we can from each other. Today is just a very interesting time that we're living in. And so if you have the time to think through something that would make your partner's day, right? Even if again, it's just something small, like a sticky note, or you send some flowers on a random Tuesday and it's like, for what? And they're like, oh my gosh, you were thinking about me, right? Like, do not be afraid to consistently show kindness and thoughtfulness because what that does is ultimately bring that out of that person as well, right? And of course, we don't want to do things like that because we expect something in return, but we genuinely want to do these things because this is how we're going to consistently build that love in our relationships and how we're going to consistently show up for them and really have a long lasting and healthy relationship, which ultimately is the goal. Today's episode is brought to you by the Merch Shop at the key to consistency.com. I would encourage you to visit our merch shop to see if there's anything that piques your interest. One of the easiest ways to be consistent is to be visually reminded that you are on a mission. You are going to be consistent. So whether you pick up a phone case or you pick up a t-shirt, we have something for you. Again, that is www.thekeytoconsistency.com. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Awesome guys. So the next thing we're going to dive into as it relates to love and consistency is the importance of being consistently reliable and dependable. It is so important for the longevity of our relationships that we fulfill our commitments and that we honor our promises especially in times of need. This really builds the foundation of trust and security. And so rather than looking at this from a romantic lens, I am going to take this one from more of a family and friend lens because that's where I find that when it comes down to being dependable or being reliable, that could sometimes be lacking depending on your family or your friend situation, right? If you say, hey, I'm going to show up, I'm going to be there for your graduation to support a family member or to support a friend, right? It is important that you show up and that you're there and that you're present, right? Those types of moments when you're there to celebrate someone else or you're there because you told the person, hey, I'm just going to be there and you're just honoring the promise that you made, doing that consistently fosters a level of love and trust in a relationship that literally you can't even put a measure on, right? To know that if the chips are down, I can call on this person. I can, like, this person's going to be there for me, right? Like, for example, if someone, you have a flat tire and you know I have this person who is dependable and I can call them and they're going to be there, right? Like, when you're in that dire situation, do you have someone that you can call? And better yet, are you that person that someone else can possibly call because you guys have a relationship that is built? 
built on found that is built on trust and that is built on safety and security and this person actually sticks to their word right there is nothing worse than having someone close to you again thinking maybe mom dad cousins friends and they're super close to you and you love them you really do as a person but you know if i'm in a jam i cannot call this person I can, like, there, there's no way, right? I'd rather be in this situation I'm in and be in need than to call this person. That is a terrible, terrible way to feel. But unfortunately, it is the reality of the situation when we think about sometimes you can be around people who are narcissistic. And as of late, you would think that we truly just live in a narcissistic culture, but we have the ability to change that with our consistency, with making sure that we show up in the world in a very consistent manner that allows us to say, I am going to be there for you understanding that not everyone is going to reciprocate that, right? Not everyone, just because you become a lot more dependable and a lot more reliable, that doesn't necessarily mean that those people you're doing that for are going to do that for you. That is where discernment and wisdom come in because that is a very easy way for you to begin to try to pour from an empty cup when you give and you give and you give. And while we are certainly called to assist and be there for people, we also have to realize that we do not have the power to change any other human situation if they themselves do not want to change. So be wise and in the people that you're directing this dependability and reliability to, right? Make sure that it's someone that you know and you feel like with time, they are ultimately going to see your actions and they're gonna themselves want to change for themselves. They're going to want to continue to build that trust and that security in the relationship that comes from being reliable and being more dependable. If you are not a reliable and dependable person by nature, and that is something that you struggle with, maybe you struggle with following through with your word. Maybe you sometimes say things, but you end up flaking out. I would encourage you to one with yourself, kind of write down in those moments of, let's say you said you're going to go somewhere and then you don't. What is keeping you from going there? Is it just laziness where you don't want to go? Is it trepidation that you may feel internally? And if this is an exercise that may be too deep and too personal for you to do by yourself, maybe you want to visit a therapist and try to walk through it with them. Or if you have a trusted friend, trusted counselor, trusted advisor, and you find that you're struggling with being a dependable and a reliable person, you want to visit that with them as well to kind of help you uncover and unpack why I'm doing the things I'm doing and what makes me do these things. Um, Because when you show up, it really changes the way you perceive yourself and people perceive and react and ultimately love and treat you, right? Like we're not going to pretend as stated before that the person that you love, but you know you can't call them when you need it. We're not going to pretend that you treat them the same way that you do the person that you love and you can call them when, when you're in need, right? And with that, it may not even be something you're doing consciously, but we have to understand that as that as humans consciously or unconsciously, we have biases and those biases are oftentimes based on our exposure to a certain thing, whether in this example, in this context, it's people when you are exposed to friend number, friend number one, and you love them as a person, they're fun to be around, super fun to be around. You would invite them to the party, but you would not call them if you needed someone to help you change a tire versus friend number two, who may be more reserved, may not be the life of the party. You would still invite them because they're cool, but you also know that this is the friend that I can call when I need something. The conversations that you have with these individuals are going to be different. Ultimately, the way you treat these individuals are going to be different. Who you're willing to take these people around are going to be different. One could be worth taking to meet your family and hang out at the family gathering. One may be a bit You may or may not show up on time. You may or may not bring anything with you. Like you guys get the point. Being a reliable and dependable person impacts the love that you feel for a person 
again, whether consciously or unconsciously, because of the way reliability, dependability, and being consistent all tie into trust. When you consistently show up for someone, when you're consistently there for them, it just ultimately increases the level of love and really builds that foundation that you guys have in that relationship. And so the last thing, guys, that I wanted to chat with you about on the topic of love and consistency, of course, is going to be consistent communication, but no love podcast would be complete without talking about conflict resolution, right? Because when we're in these romantic relationships, when we're in these friend relationships or family relationships, One, open communication is very important for maintaining love and for resolving conflicts, which ultimately impact how much love you feel for someone in a moment, but also long term, right? For any type of relationship, if you engage in consistent, constructive communication, that includes being able to actively listen and to work together to come to a mutually satisfactory conclusion, you are a lot more likely to experience long lasting love and ultimately satisfaction in that relationship, right? So said a different way, when you are engaging in any type of relationship, platonic or non-platonic, if you do not have the ability to constructively communicate with them, that is a problem. When you feel like you have to walk on eggshells around this person because you can't really say what you want to say because you're afraid of how they feel about something or you don't think that they're going to truly listen or they're going to be hurt and they're going to cut you off. All of that really does impact the amount of love that you feel for that person. Maybe not in that moment, but if you feel like I'm walking on eggshells around you for 10 years, it is going to impact how you feel about that person. And it is not okay, especially when we think about any type of relationship, right? Whether it's husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, mother, daughter, any type of relationship, you want to be in a position where you can effectively communicate with them and provide them with feedback, right? Like sometimes it may be tough to have a conversation with someone that you love, but just because something is tough does not mean that you shy away from it for sake of hurting someone's feelings or for sake of you not wanting to be vocal enough to express how you feel about something. It is so important that we do that. As of late, and this isn't even, you can Google this, but we all know, especially if you live in America, that the voice rate in America, every one out of two married couples get divorced, right? A lot of that has to do with consistent communication and conflict resolution, right? How are you managing your conflicts in your conclusion in your relationships day to day? Are you coming up with solutions that are mutually beneficial to both of you guys or is it one-sided all the time? Of course, there are some times where the conclusion may, it it may be one-sided, but if it's one-sided 98% of the time versus it's one-sided and it's sometimes it's my way, sometimes it's their way. If you find that you're able to strike an even balance, even if it's always not mutually beneficial, that'll still help lead to those long lasting relationships versus if you find that it's always, you know, 98 to right? Like that is, that is a terrible ratio when we think about being able to effectively resolve conflict. And while we're thinking about this in like a joking manner, the divorce rate in America is so high because of these things. And that is why building consistency is so important because if you consistently communicate day to day, that's that's really where that's where divorce comes from, right? It comes from day to day things that are not done consistently. We're not showing kindness consistently. We're not actively listening. We're not communicating with one another in a constructive manner. Day to day, you continue to compile those things over time that is what leads to divorce. And that is honestly, personally, why I love this podcast where we're able to really hone in on consistency. Because if you just look at your life moment to moment, day to day, and yes, it's important to look long-term and think long-term, but let's not stay there. Let's always come back to this present moment. What can I do in this present moment to make this relationship better? Where can I, again, kind of help build that gap to always be as 
as much as I possibly can, having something to pour into someone else. Because what happens when I don't? Outside of divorce, this was something that I've personally found interesting in my research on this topic is that there is something called broken heart syndrome and is essentially brought on by the release of stress hormones that temporarily stuns the heart muscle and it produces symptoms that are similar to a typical heart attack. When you think about your heart breaking and going through a divorce, as traumatic as that is, or to be honest, even if we take it out of the marriage context, unfortunately, we do have a lot of people that are cohabitating and that are living together before marriage. And even with that, when you live with someone for three, four, five years and you guys part ways, that is enough to bring stress, right? Now we're dividing, well, I bought I bought the TV. Well, I gave you $90 a month for the TV. Is it my TV or is it your TV? Who's taking the dog? Like when you closely partner your life with someone, pulling apart from them really becomes sticky, right? Even if we're not taking this in a romantic sense, if we're taking this in the sense of family, it is tough to be able to part ways. Let's say you had a a big fallout with, let's say an immediate family member like your mother or your father. You guys were once okay and now you're not okay. While you may have your reasons and it may be justifiable, it still hurts. Now, does it hurt enough and cause enough stress to go to the broken heart syndrome? I can't say right? It has varying degrees. But what I do know is this syndrome came about for a reason. It is here for a reason because we have these stress hormones that hit us suddenly. It's something that while we cannot control other people's actions and what they choose to do, we can certainly control how we handle situations and how we choose to live our lives day to day. And of course, if you're listening to this podcast, you are wanting to and actively practicing how you can develop consistency in every single area of your life. So hopefully today's podcast episode about prioritizing open communication and, you know, helping you to manage some conflict resolution, really cultivating reliability and dependability and being emotionally available and expressing that consistent affection and support towards your partner will really help you guys see that it is so, 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 so critical and so, 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 so important that you look at your relationships, not as these things to say, well, I'm I'm married or I'm in a relationship so I can just stop. I don't have to do anything else. That could not be further from the truth. It is daily maintenance that keeps your relationships platonic and non-platonic strong. So hopefully you guys learned something from today's episode. As we wrap up, I do want to, of course, end our episode today with a verse from one of the greatest books in the world, arguably the greatest book in the world, the Bible. Today's verse comes from John 15 verse 12. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Given today's topic, I think that verse really speaks for itself. Remember guys, consistency breeds mastery and mastery transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of The Key to Consistency. Wherever you are listening to this podcast, it would mean everything to me if you could rate it, review it, Reach out to me on Instagram. Would love your feedback. Would love to hear anything you like, anything you don't like. Please feel free to share this episode with someone that you think could benefit from it. And until next time, bye guys.